Hey everyone. Well, battery hookup did it again. They got more of my money. This is a 350 volt electric vehicle battery that came out of a military vehicle. I received this, it had some banding on it, I removed that, and there were some nails in these 2x4s that were holding this to the pallet. That's the only thing I've done with this so far, other than that, it's exactly as I've received it. Uh, there are no bolts that I can see on here. It looks like there were some, some bolts on here, but all the nuts have been removed, so I'm pretty sure, other than maybe this connector in the front, this whole thing should just lift right off and, and uh, clamshell open right up. There are 15 24 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries inside this. They're wired in series, so I'm gonna pull this apart and we should be able to harvest some really good batteries from this module. What do you think? Yeah. All right, so I just lifted on this and this entire end is loose, but it looks like there's one bolt down at this end. So I'm gonna move over there and show you that now. All right, so this is the only bolt that I see holding the two halves of this shell together. All right, so this is a three millimeter Allen head. I was hoping that I could get the eighth inch to fit in there because of America, but apparently that's not allowed here. And pull this apart. Uh, popped right apart. So I think we should be, oh, it's gonna come apart. All right guys, so I got this thing taken apart. Um, there's a ton of bus bars in this thing. They're, it's all braided, uh, it's all A123 in here. So I'm gonna show you this area right here, and it's the same thing, it just repeats itself over and over. So you get to a point where you can get this apart in like two or three minutes. There are retaining clips on the back side of these connectors. Let me get that in focus. So you just push this down and it releases it. So I'll go through and show you how I disassemble this part right here. So there's no bus bar in the way of this connector, so you can just get behind there with your finger and release that. Same thing down here. You can release that. And then these are zip tied and they have retainers. Those pop off really easy. And then to get these, these two out of here, you got to remove the bus bar first. So now that that bus bar is out of the way, those bolts allow you to unplug that one and then it's the same thing up top. All right, that's all there is to it. You just do that all the way down. There's one, two, three of those types of connections. This is free now to come out and that's it. These are ready to take apart. Right, so we're on the back side of this. I just wanted to mention really quick, the only connection are these two connectors. So once you go through and remove these, other than these aluminum bus bars, this backside is done, it's super quick. All right, so then when, once you get to the end, there's this bus bar here, I, I already removed it. Uh, so you pull that off and then same thing, this connector comes out, this connector comes out. Ooh, that one's kind of tricky. And this one down here at the bottom can come out and that's it that's the wiring that runs back into the bms and everything so the whole wiring harness has been unhooked and it took maybe 15 to 20 minutes all right so i have all of the smaller bus bars removed now and i'm going to pull all these aluminum bus bars off and after that i will be ready to unhook the main connections down here and all of these batteries will be ready to come out i'm pretty sure you just unbolt these I guess we'll find out. All of these bus bar connections are a T30 size Torx bit. And I have all of the aluminum unhooked from the batteries themselves. And now there's some connections over here that are heat shrinked. So we'll open those up and unhook them and should be ready to start removing these from the whole module. These bolts should be threaded all the way through this. There's some square nuts at the bottom. So once you start loosening these up, this whole top plate looks like it's one piece. I just wanted to show the, the quality of this connection right here. So it's an aluminum bus bar that runs down that same T30 bolt. This, this actually, this piece is threaded and then this copper wire is resistance welded to this bar right here. So it's crazy how high quality this entire module is. It's really impressive. I'm almost sad to take it apart, but not really. So I got these all un uh, unconnected. Just 
<laughs> I have these all disconnected and this came out. This is all battery cable that you can use. You can even bolt stuff to it. It's threaded on this. Yeah. It's threaded all the way through. This is all one piece. So you can use this if you had another terminal connection to run off of this. It's already done. So that's kind of handy. Uh, and then these aluminum, one of them fell off already, but these are ready to come off. So you just pick this up. It's crazy flexible. It's kind of freaky. And we are ready to start removing these bolts. All right, so it looks like those bolts on top are all 15 millimeter sockets. So let's start taking those off. All right, so over on this end is a grounding cable. There is a 10 millimeter nut here, and it looks like another uh, three millimeter Allen head on this side, and that grounds to the aluminum bus bar on the bottom. All right, so this is actually a four millimeter Allen head, so let's get that out of the way. All right. All right, so I got all these bolts out of here. They are super long, so they do thread down into this aluminum plate down in the bottom. This one, I'm pretty sure the square nut that sleeves into that aluminum is spinning inside the aluminum. So we're gonna go ahead and remove all of the cells or all the batteries down there and pivot this out of the way. And then we're gonna have to use a metabo and cut the head off this bolt. So that's gonna be fun. All right, so these all came off pretty easily. It looks like they have some, I'm guessing this is an electrical insulator and probably a thermal compound because this is all one big heat sink it's uh, liquid cooled but after that these really i mean they they just pop right off it's pretty easy so one thing worth noting on this because i was a little confused trying to figure out the main positive and negative it looks like uh the way this is wired is actually two 160 volt connections and then those are wired in series by this so this connector is, it came like this. It was not connected at all or anything like that. There was nothing in this. Uh, and I measured 160 volts from the main negative that I could find to this. And then from this connection to the main positive was 160 volts. So on the back side, these are electrically isolated. So I'm pretty sure without this, it's, it's actually wired up as two 160 volt series connection. So if you don't find the 350 volts on this, because these are stored, they're like 23 volts a piece. So if you don't find the 350 volts on it, that's probably why. All right, so one of these batteries are vertical on the very end where the BMS is. And I took these two out and I just noticed that uh, these bolts are shorter, which came out of these, this end, and all of the other bolts are longer. And I just looked in these two corners here and there are some big Allen head bolts. So I'm gonna take those out. I was trying to figure out why this wouldn't come loose and it's cause it's still bolted to the aluminum. Looks like the Allen head is a 5 uh, I'm sure it's metric, but the 5 16 fits in there and it's fairly snug. So I don't think it's gonna strip out. So I'm gonna give it a shot. <laughs> that worked. <laughs> and obviously the cutoff wheel was powered by the Kodiak. Alright, so we should be able to just lift these up off of that bolt now. Nice. So our main negative is still connected, so we gotta unhook that real quick and then this can come off. All right, so this module showed up at about 4.30 p.m. and it is 7.54 and it's completely disassembled. So not bad, had to figure out how it comes apart and everything. Uh, it's all basic hand tools and it's super simple. I'm pretty sure if I bought a second one, it'd probably be apart in less than an hour. All right, so all of these holes here had 13 millimeter bolts, well, nuts in them. Uh, so I'm gonna go through and take all those off and this whole aluminum piece should come off. So there is one, I'm assuming it's a five millimeter Allen head right here, but I have a 3 16 that fits in it, so I'm just gonna use that. The 
get a temperature sensor on the bottom of this, we'll have to unhook. All right, so there's a four millimeter uh, Allen head right here with a temperature sensor and a grounding strap. So we'll just take that off real quick. So this is the retainer on the bottom of that aluminum plate with this bolt that didn't want to come out. So yeah, it's a square nut that seats down in here and it was basically it just deformed this enough to allow it to spin freely in there. Aside from the obvious 15 lithium iron phosphate modules that I harvested from this, there's some other pretty cool stuff in this that can be reused. So I'm, I'm going to go over that now. All right, so these are the most useful pieces of wiring that I found on this module. Uh, so these over here are about two feet long and then they get a little bit shorter. The one all the way to the right here is about one foot long. And then over here is, I'm pretty sure this is some 10 gauge wire. It's already got some eyelets on it and stuff. So that could be handy for a few things. And then all the way up here are a couple of bus bars and those are like three eighths of an inch thick. And so that, that could handle some current too. So you could use that for some stuff in the future. All right, so it looks like this cabling is 50 square millimeters uh, and it's battery cable, so that's good. Uh, 50 square millimeters converted to AWG is one gauge. So this chart says that one gauge wire is rated at 130 amps. So to be on the safe side, I would say that this can carry 100 amps pretty easily. So. That's a decent amount of wire that can carry 100 amps. You could definitely set up all of your cabling for a small battery system with this. So these are all the aluminum bus bars that I pulled off the module. My tape measure is set to five feet right now, so you can see that the longer ones are pretty long. Uh, and this stuff's really soft and flexible, so you can bend this however you need it, and it'll stay pretty much however you bend it. And being aluminum, I'm pretty sure you could drill it fairly easily, cut it to length, so you can make other bus bars out of this if you needed to. So these are all the braided bus bars that I pulled off of the modules. There's seven of this type and three of that type. And then there's also a couple, there's like three of these on there. I only have one in frame right now. But this is all, it's plastic on here, so it's all sealed up. And then there's heat shrink on the ends. All of the connections on here are really solid. So it's pretty cool to see all of the details that they put into this module. I I would really like to know how much this thing cost when it was brand new, because uh, they're top of the line cells and they they covered everything. It's it's pretty incredible. All right, and the last thing that I found on this battery that I thought was kind of handy or nifty was this here, and this is a four position fuse module. So you can see the four wires on this side, four wires on this side. And then I broke this earlier uh, in the disassembly, but these just pop off and you can see that they have, uh, these are really high quality fuses by the way, uh, 30 amp fuses in here. So I'm assuming it's 10 gauge wire. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can make use of this somewhere in the future. Ugh. All right, everyone, that's it for this disassembly video. I have successfully trashed my garage and I had a blast doing it, and you can expect to see a bunch of these batteries used for future projects. I'll see you on the next one.